Welcome to Western India's coverage of the second test between England and India at Lords. Three days in, we're still no closer to knowing who's going to win this game. Uh, at one stage after lunch uh, on the second, uh, on the third day, sorry, uh, India looked like they were running away with it. Pujara and uh, Vijay with a big partnership, and I think the lead was 94 with nine wickets still in hand. But that Plunkett spell has completely changed this game around. I've got Isha Guha with me to discuss this. Um, where do you see this game headed after three days? Because it's it's been back and forth is, right through. It is really tough to call. It's been like a tug of war, hasn't it, between both of the teams? Um, certainly, the pitch has changed a lot. Um, during that um, VJ and Pajara partnership, it looked pretty easy to, to, to navigate. And there were the odd deliveries that were, that were popping up and a bit of uneven bats that they had to contend with. But they looked fairly comfortable. Uh, and Alistair Cook was probably scratching his head a little bit, searching for um, a wicket, no, not knowing where his wicket was going to come from. Um, and I think Liam Plunkett's spell was, was outstanding, certainly after the first innings, where he bowled too short, probably a bit too wide. Um, and after that wonderful 50, of course, to, to give England a little bit of a lead, that just gave him confidence in that second innings. He pitched the ball up a little bit more, and that delivery to Pajara was, uh, was a special one. Just took the outside edge. Pajara probably didn't need to play at it, but it's one of those pitches where you're never quite in. Uh, and then obviously the one to, to Virat Kohli. You can understand why he wanted to leave it. You know, he'd been sat up in the pavilion um, all that time watching Vijay and Pajara leaving the ball consistently. I think we looked at a, a pitch map of, of where the England bowlers were looking to target. Uh, and maybe 20% of the deliveries were actually hitting the stumps. So you could not understand why he wanted to leave it, and he probably wasn't expecting it to drag back so much against um, the slope. Uh, it also brings us to variable bounce, doesn't it? Because that's increasingly going to become a factor, or is that simply because England have more tall, fast bowlers? It plays a part, that's for sure. Um, I think we saw, even in the second inning, Shami was getting a couple um, to really kick off the surface, the one to, to Bell, um, I believe, I think that was off Bhuvanesh Wakuma, um, he got to kick off the surface. So it's not necessarily just about the height. Um, Ishat Sharma is obviously a taller bowler, so they do have that variety in height which could cause problems. I certainly think that as the pitch wears, 250 plus is going to be a good score for India. It's, it's just dependent on how much time they want to try and bowl England out. But when we when we talk about the pitch wearing, it's not as though India have a, a world class spinner in their ranks either to to run through. Do you think there'll be enough variations in the pitch for the, the pace bowlers as well to thrive? Uh, I think so. I think certainly if um, with a new ball in hand, there is movement off the pitch. Um, we, we saw it turning quite a lot yesterday, um, so Jadeja will be able to get some turn and a bit of bounce um, come day five. And then it's just the pressure of, of day five, knowing that England will want to chase down a score. Um, if they settle into that mindset of just playing for a draw, then the pressure is automatically back on them. Uh, and India can thrive on that and really just um, look to or search for wickets through pressure. So that's why I think India potentially have the upper hand. It will be very much dependent on, on how they go in that first session tomorrow. Um, they'll probably want to just see out the first half an hour, see what the pitch is doing. And then if they manage to form a partnership between Dhoni and, uh, and Vijay, and then the lower order batsmen coming in, they want to up the momentum, try and score quickly. England this morning were going at fives and over. And I actually questioned that for a while. And I, and I said to myself, do they need to go that quickly? Are they trying to take too many risks? Could they maybe just bed in for a little bit, bat the majority of the day, just so they have even even more of a lead to put pressure on India and have less to get in the last innings? But that uh, the lower order batting from both sides has been such a big feature of these two test matches so far, hasn't it? I mean, I don't think India, when they came out today, would... They know Plunkett can bat, but they on this kind of surface, they probably wouldn't have expected a 55 not out and an England lead of of 24 as it turned out. Yeah, that's right, but but when he was batting, the pitch, I mean, it wasn't doing what it did on the first day. It was just seeming around everywhere. It was really hard for everyone to play. Um, I thought Liam Plunkett played extremely well. 
Um, yes, you're not expecting him to do well, but, but that's sometimes part of the problem, that you, you may sometimes in your head psychologically get a little bit complacent. Um, you know as a bowler, you know as a captain that you want to just try and finish off that innings as quickly as possible, but sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. You have to be patient. Um, and to be fair to him, he, he played a good knock, um, rotated the strike well, he played well off the back foot, uh, and uh, yeah, he was incredibly impressive. And one last question. There's been so much talk about Alistair Cook in the captaincy, but uh, another man under scrutiny is uh, Matt Pryor, both with the gloves and with the bat. And uh, Sky uh, showed a montage today of the way he's been dismissed this summer. A lot of short balls going for the pull, mm. top edging or fending off. Mm. Do you think England will take a big call with regards to the wicket keeping in the middle of a series, or will they wait till? It's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, he's dropped a couple of, of important catches, yes. regulation catches, you could say. He is under pressure. There is Joss Butler knocking on the door. Is Joss Butler good enough to, to be a wicketkeeper in Test cricket? We know how good he is with the bat. Matt Pryor has the experience. Um, he's certainly someone who is under a lot of pressure. I thought today he was looking to be naturally attacking. That's his, that is his natural game. Whether he just tried one too many, um, that's what I was talking about in terms of the risk that England were taking. Could he have maybe just sat in a little bit longer? He, he often comes in in situations where England need the scoring rate to improve. And that comes about um, generally because England's top three um, bat quite slowly. Um, OK, it was determined by the nature of the pitch on this occasion because it was moving around a lot. but. That's generally what happens. You have a middle or lower order who, who like to bat quickly. Um, and yes, he, he is potentially susceptible to the short ball. He will be absolutely devastated about getting out in that fashion. Um, he is under pressure. It'll be interesting to see what England um, decide to do after this test. Um, I think Alistair Cook not scoring runs is, is probably a bigger problem for England. Um, but again, it will depend on, on what the outcome is as well, um, whether England draw or, or whether they lose, because I think they'll have to ask a few more questions if they do lose this match. Thanks a lot for joining us, Ishan. By tomorrow evening, hopefully, we'll be some, some way closer to finding out who's going to win.